Well, that's interesting. Inventory isn't decreasing like it traditionally does. It's not really increasing either, but it might be enough to eclipse the 2023 inventory levels. Meanwhile, the condo market, it's playing it, well, pretty much even in 2023. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update, and we'll also talk about some relevant current events. And there is definitely some stronger buyer demand out there than normal, but the market, it hasn't exactly popped off yet. Buyer activity on the website, it's up. Inquiries are up. Buyer home buying presentation meetings are up, but it's not yet equating to a boost in sales yet. But I think that's coming. Weather dependent, of course. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions about the real estate market, then know I am here to help. Also, as a quick heads up, I'm looking to buy houses. Let me know if there are any houses that you're aware of that need a lot of, well, tender loving care. The uglier, then the better. If you got one, then reach out or visit cashoffernma.com. Now let's get into it all and jump into the single family market stats. Inventory is up slightly this week over week as there are now 3,000 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. It's up 60 units from last week, and it's only 2.8% less than the amount of homes that buyers had to look at just 28 days ago. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that I felt it would stick around this 3,000 handle for inventory levels until the end of February. So I feel like, well, I'm playing with a little fire right now and hoping that inventory doesn't go up too much and I lose my prediction there. This is where you can really see what I was talking about with the not really inventory growth, but inventory steadiness. In other years, we see the inventory levels pull back, but this year, we really haven't seen that so far. We have 232 fewer single-family houses on the market today than we did today back in 2023, and 913 more single-family homes on the market today than we did when the inventory levels and comparing it to the same time in 2022. We also seem to be pulling away a little bit from that 2021 numbers as well. The takeaway, even with inventory levels not necessarily pulling back like we've seen in the past couple of years, inventory levels are still very low and are going to remain historically low this year. It's the new listings and under agreements where it gets, well, a little interesting and where you can see the reasons for the inventory steadiness. There were 585 single family houses that came on the market this week. Now, this was only two units or point. 3% less than the same week last year. 587 single family houses came on the market. Now, two weeks ago, we listed 12% less homes. The last week was 10% less homes. And now, a pretty much dead even week for new listings. The four week rolling average is 345 units, but that data includes the slow last to Christmas and Christmas to New Year's weeks when 220 and 133 new listings came on the market. Nobody wanted to list their house then. What a surprise. This, it's going to start normalizing come next week. This graph really illustrates why the inventory gap tightened so much against 2023, even though new listings were on par with 2023. We had 551 houses go under agreement last week. This, however, was 23.4%, where 168 fewer units in the same week last year when 719 single-family houses went under agreement. It's in the pending data where the big difference was. Now the four week rolling average is 432 units. This is going to really start ramping up in the coming weeks, so be prepared. So when compared to last year's market, new listings, they were even while under agreements were down by 23%. There were 482 single family houses that closed last week for an average sales price of $753,000 and a median sales price of $578,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were down by 1.7% is there are 474 single family houses that sold this week last year for an average sales price of $675,000. Months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market. With the closer that you get to zero, the more aggressive and stronger of a seller's market it is. This week, months of inventory ticked up to 1.24 months from last week's 1.2 months. Now the 1.24 months this week is compared to the 1.13 months this week last year. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. You knew it was coming. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a house, that it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, on to the condo market. We have 1,780 condos on the market as of Monday. After a one-unit increase last week, the condo market has had a big moving week with an inventory growth of an additional eight units. 
Currently, there are only a half percent fewer condos on the market today than just 28 days ago. Now, the toe-to-toe -to -toe with 2023 continues. We now have only 10 fewer units on the market today than in 2023 and 312 more units than compared to inventory levels back in 2022. The condo market, it's just threading that needle right now. Now, new listing activity was down in line with last week, but down year over year. There were 324 condos that came on the market last week with that four-week rolling average of 220 condos. So 324 units listed was 24 units or 8.2% more than the 353 condos that came on the market the same week in 2023. Under agreements continue to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with 2023 as well. This week, we put 319 units under agreement. This 319 units was six units or 1.9% shy of last year's numbers when we put 325 condos under agreement. So last week, it was seven units shy. And then this week, it's six units shy. Looking forward to next week where it's going to be, well, five units shy? I don't know. The four-week rolling average is 195 units. So 8.2% fewer listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year, while selling 1.9% fewer condos. There were 187 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $796,000 and a median sales price of $523,000. And this same week last year, there were 187 condos that sold, so sales levels were actually down by 18.7%. Months of inventory ticked up to 1.81 months from last week's 1.76 months, and this is compared to the months of inventory levels of 1.62 months this week last year. Any chance that you can just do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button right down there? Just believe it or not, it just helps with that YouTube algorithm. It makes a huge difference for me as well as the channel. And well, subscribing. That one doesn't hurt either. So if you don't mind, consider subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates. Not a great week for interest rates. They were up a considerable amount this week. And looking at the longer term picture, though, of the last couple months, interest rates, well, it's been a pretty favorable story. So let's stay positive. We have the GDP and unemployment numbers coming up at the end of this week. And then the Fed interest rate decision next week. But... The interest rate decision should be, well, a pretty boring one, quite frankly, but be on the lookout for the GDP and unemployment numbers. If they come in hotter than the market is expecting, then the inflation folks will come out saying, well, I told you so, and it becomes less and less likely of a March or May rate cut. And to that point, check out this article, Fed to Cut in Q2, probably June. Economists less dovish than markets. Now, this article goes on to say that the Fed will wait until the second quarter before cutting interest rates with June seen more likely than May and less easing forecasts this year than markets now are expecting and pricing in. I had said, don't bet on the March rate cut, not with inflation. I still think they cut because of the election sometime this year, but it's not going to be in March. The article also says that only a few days ago, federal funds futures pricing for the first cut shifted to May after at one point markets gave a 90% chance of a move in March. The hot economic data last week has everything to do with that. Watch out for that GDP number. Again, it's going to matter. Ultimately, the health of the market and rate cuts and recession comes down to the American consumer. And us regular folks know, well, just how hard it's been for this high inflationary environment of the last couple of years. But it looks like it's going to get worse. Check out this article. Layoffs surged 98% in 2023. It could get worse this year. That's not what we want to hear. The article says that companies played 721,677 job cuts last year. A substantial increase from the 363,832 layoffs reported in 2022. And that the problem could actually get worse in 2024 as the labor market it continues to soften in the face of high interest rates and stubborn inflation. Technology, that was the worst performing industry. Then retail companies, then surprisingly healthcare and product manufacturers. So there is that to look out for. But here, well, this is the icing on the cake. As delinquencies spike, banks are granting fewer credit lines. Now, the article says that with credit card delinquency rates at their highest levels in more than a decade, getting approved for a new line of credit, it's getting harder. That's the consumer's lifeline. Banks contracting on lending is never a good sign for the future of the economy. And according to a report, 3.19% of credit card balances were at least 
30 days past due at the end of the third quarter of 2023. And that is up from 2.76% in the second quarter and the highest level since 2012. Now, the question becomes, will these economic events that will ultimately affect the economic growth be enough to hamper down the inflationary pressures for what the Fed is shooting for as that soft landing? Now, only time is going to tell, but I feel like we're all playing with a little fire right now. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone else that is thinking about buying or selling a house, then I can't tell you how much I appreciate you passing along my contact information. You can visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com or find all of my contact information in the description below. Have a great week and until next time.